And today we're gonna compare these bad boys. Will they be a clear cut winner? Let's find out. What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time to the channel, you've got way too much time in your hands. All right, getting into today's content. So what are we doing? We're gonna compare and contrast the similarities and differences between the Gibson SG and the Epiphone SG. I uh, just wanna preface the video by saying that Epiphone is owned by Gibson, if you don't know that already. They've been owned by Gibson since 1957. So while these two guitars are made by the same company, they're manufactured in different facilities in different countries. Thus, there are many dissimilarities between the two. We're gonna go over all those today in this video. Getting right to the point, whenever I'm trying to make a decision between two guitars to determine which one is quote unquote better, even if there is such a thing, I like to use a four factor list to help me make that decision. And I'm gonna throw in a bonus fifth one at the end, stick around to the end of the video to find out what that is because it might pertain to you as well. Okay, so this is all subjective by the way. These are my personal opinions. Your opinions may vary. Everyone's opinion is equally valid. Please feel free to leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of this list. So in prioritized order for me, number one has to be, of course, the sound. Enjoy the way it sounds or not. If it sounds like complete garbage, you're not gonna wanna play it, you're not gonna wanna listen to it, and nobody else is either, so why buy it? Plain and simple. Number two, playability. So what do I mean by this word playability? So for me, this really refers to, is the instrument easy or difficult to play? For whatever it is that you wanna do on it, is it easy or difficult to do? Number three is feel. So just physically, how does the instrument feel in your hands or on your lap, or if you're standing with a neck strap, does it feel comfortable or not? Uh, you're gonna know if it is or isn't within a matter of seconds, five seconds tops. Pick up the instrument, set it on your lap or do what you're gonna do and begin playing. If it feels good to you, if you like the feel of the neck and the feel of, of the body and the shape of it and all that stuff and the, the angle of the bridge and the set, you know, the setup of the strings, if it feels good to you, you're good to go. Number four would be the build quality. This is a little less subjective because, I mean, obviously, you've heard the phrase, you get what you pay for. You know, you pay a little bit more money, you might get some better quality stuff, but that's not always the case with guitars. There are some really good guitars out there that cost $300 and less and are really great quality. And then there's some guitars out there that cost $1,000 and more, and you wonder how they left the manufacturing floor because there's so many flaws with them. So again, it's subjective, but if we're talking about things like uh, the type of woods used, the, how many pieces of woods are used for the body and for the neck, is the neck quarter sawn or not? Is it caramelized maple or not? Things like that. What kind of fretboard uh, is on there? You know, what kind of frets wires do they use? Uh, the quality of the nut. Is it plastic, bone, brass, graphite? You know, these all play into the build quality. And of course, the electronics, 
are probably the most important. The pickups, uh, the pots, the switch, the output jack, uh, all that stuff p plays into the build quality, right? At the end of the day, one of these guitars has to be a better build quality than the other. We're gonna go over all that too. So if you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna give you the bonus one, the fifth factor I use to help determine which one is quote unquote better or which one I'm gonna buy. That is of course the price. So this may or may not you know, affect you at all, but it's something to consider either way. So the Epiphone obviously is a lot cheaper. It currently clocks in at $500, while this Gibson here is uh, currently $1,800. So the Gibson is over three times the price, over three and a half times more expensive than the Epiphone. If that price doesn't matter to you, or you just absolutely have to have the Gibson name on the headstock, or you just absolutely have to have the Made in America version, then go ahead and get the Gibson, have a nice day. But if price really is a factor for you, you know, if you're younger and don't have a lot of money, or it's your first instrument, don't even know if you're gonna stick around, stick with it, you might wanna get the cheaper one, because you know, then you've got a lot less money invested in it if you have to get rid of it, or you just decide you don't wanna play it anymore. Uh, so price can be a factor, you know, even if you're wealthy, it still matters, right? Every, every penny matters. I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> you have to figure out what's right for you. So for me, sound-wise, I think I would have to go with the Gibson. It's got a warmer tone to it. It's, um, it's just a fuller bodied, more controlled, more evenly, uh, more evenly EQ'd sound overall. And that could be attributed to the pickups. It could be attributed to the, to the body or the thicker neck or all of those things combined. Uh, number two for me was playability. This was kind of a toss up because the main factor for me in deciding which one was better playability wise was the neck. Uh, the neck on the Gibson is a 60s slim taper neck. That's what they call it. And uh, it's more substantial than the other one. So it's just, it's thicker and it's wider. And it gets thicker as you move up the neck. So you can certainly feel that. So if you're somebody who likes a thicker or a rounder feeling neck, it's not huge, but it's, you know, it's just, it's more substantial than the Epiphone. So the Epiphone neck is much thinner. It's a D-shaped neck and um, it's listed as a D-shaped neck and, and that's exactly what it is. It's still very comfortable. But, uh, you know, if you want to shred or you're just a fast player or you're a kid or you're somebody with just smaller hands, this might be the way to go because it's just less wood in your hand. You know, it's just easier to get around, maneuver on. So playability wise, for me, it's a toss up. I guess I would go with this one because I tend to play more of the modern stuff anyhow. I like to move up and down the neck a little bit easier. And I felt like I could really do that with the Epiphone. All right. So for number three, as far as the feel is concerned, uh, I'll be honest, they do feel very similar. But uh, again, I'm going to have to give it to the Gibson guys. And here's why. So if you'll notice that the forearm carve here is just more substantial, it's more angular, and it's a lot smoother. So that's just a little more comfortable under your arm. And the thicker neck, while that's not really geared towards shredding per se, uh, it just feels nicer in the hand. And the handshake where you hold it at the, at the heel is just much more comfortable. So as far as feel goes, it's gonna be Gibson. And then of course, last but not least is the build quality, which you know, hands down, it's gotta go made in the USA, but here's why. Uh, it's got better tuners right out of the factory. These are the Gibson branded vintage tuners. They work really well. Uh, the ones that were on the Epiphone, I didn't get to experience the original ones, but I heard that they're not that great. Uh, the previous owner took those off and he swapped them for some cheap Amazon locking tuners, which were complete garbage, and it replaced them with Grover vintage tuners, which is what comes on the current version of this guitar. This is a 2016, but the current uh, SG Standard comes with Grover Vintage Tuners, so that's what's on there. The bridge is much more stable, has more heft to it, and there's no buzzing or ringing. It's, it's much more precise when you turn the screws. It just feels like a more premium piece of, of metal, as does the stop tail piece. So build quality overall, it's going to be Gibson, guys. You know, this thing rocks. Both guitars do come with Graph Tech nuts. Both guitars are mahogany body, mahogany neck. Both have medium uh, frets, but the Gibson also has the uh, bound fingerboard and the fret nibs, which are an aesthetic thing, but they also feel really nice. You know, no sharp ends at all. And it's just more comfortable overall, more solid, and sounds amazing. So for me, you know, it was a tough one here because you're, you're looking at price too, right? I mean, price is a concern, shouldn't be your main concern. Uh, really, it's the quality of the build and the sound, I think, that are most important. So overall, I gotta go Gibson on this one, guys. 
Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me and why. And if you're interested in buying either one of these guitars, I've got links down below. Check those out. And uh, that's pretty much it for today, guys. So uh, until next time, I'm out of here. See ya!